again, this is lesson three, the practical demo. So in this demo, what is going to be our objective? We're going to connect a circuit containing an electromagnetic relay. Then we're going to experimentally determine what the pickup and dropout voltages and currents are and look at those relationships and what's going on in that particular reasonably simplistic uh, magnetic circuit. So I'll just turn on the pen and uh, we'll get into it. So risk assessment, uh, I did a risk assessment. The risk of electric shock is a direct risk. Um, it's got a relatively high possibility, class B, and the way I'm going to control that is to use only ELV, and uh, 24 volts is the max we'll be using here well under the 50 volt limit. Um, electrical burns are possible, again, uh, direct risk, uh, only category C, and the way I'm going to deal with that is my power supply has a current limiting feature. So I'm going to limit the current to a point where it would not cause any problems. And finally, there might be trips and falls around the benches and workshop area. And again, I'm going to keep the leads, etc., up off the floors. So here's our circuit diagram. So we have here a DC power supply which allows me to vary the voltage, and as I mentioned before, I'll current limit it, but I'll certainly have more than sufficient current to operate the relay. We then have a switch, allows me to uh, turn the circuit on and off easily. We then have the relay coil itself here, and you can see here it's a 24 volt DC relay, three pole changeover, so it's got three sets of contacts. And then using one of those sets of contacts, I'm switching the 24 volts to operate a light emitting diode. It's a red LED. And you won't be able to see the resistor because it's an integral part of the actual LED assembly. The other thing you can see here is an ammeter and a voltmeter. And uh, my power supply has both the ammeter and the voltmeter built into the power supply itself. So I'll be able to use that rather than discrete instruments. So here's the physical circuit. This is uh, what my setup looks like. Um, there's my power supply. Um, just using the cursor to show you where the current reading is. The voltage reading. You can see here there's a pot knob for the current limit. And one that allows me to also control the voltage. You come out of my power supply and I'm supplying a switch, just an ordinary mech switch, which then supplies the coil of my relay. This little box here, it's a clear box so you can actually see what's going on inside the relay. Then the relay itself uh, comes back and is connected via the blue wire back to the zero volts. So simple connection of, I'll just draw that in so you can, you can see it. We're supplying the relay through the switch, down through here, back along the blue wire, and that gives me the way I'm turning the switch on and off. The LED, which you can see over here, here's my LED, and again, I've got a red wire coming out into the relay and then I'm picking up a contact switch and that's feeding up into the relay and then the yellow you can see coming back being the zero volts for the LED so that is just followed the circuit diagram exactly so we've seen the circuit diagram and we've now seen how we've got the physical settings. So let's get into our little experiment. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to only increase the voltage to 10% of the relay's voltage. Remember the relay's voltage is a 24 volt relay. And uh, you will uh, see very clearly that uh, I've put 26 volts on the supply and that we needed to measure the current 
and the current is obviously less than 10 milliamps. The most my ammeter can uh, display is 10 milliamps. So there is some current flowing, but it's something less than 10 milliamps. It's probably only two or three. And the status of my LED, you can see the LED is off. There's no glowing of the LED over here at all. And uh, there's actually a little blue indicator here on the top of my relay, indicating that the relay has not energized, has not pulled in, despite that I have 10% of the voltage across the relay. So the next step is to uh, increase the voltage until the relay operates. So I just slowly wound the, um, the voltage knob up. So I just slowly wound this up until the relay pulled in. And uh, again, probably can't see it too well, but this little plunger indicator has indicated that the relay is pulled in. But more clearly, you can see the LED lamp is now glowing quite brightly. So you can tell that we've turned it on. Um, we've got 50 milliamps flowing to the relay. So the relay's got 50 milliamps. which switched on at 12 volts or 12.4. So we've put that in our table here. 12.4, so the supply voltage is at 12.4, 50 milliamps, and our LED is now turned on. The next step is to wind it up to full voltage, so I've now wound it completely up to uh, the maximum voltage, and you can now see my current has increased quite substantially. It's at about 110 milliamps. Our voltage at 24 volts is up, and of course, our LED is uh, well and truly on. So our circuit is fully energized. So the next step was now to wind the voltage down until the relay just drops out. So that's what I did now. I simply took the um, voltage control and I now wound it back this way until I got the dropout point. And it dropped out at 6.8 volts. And that's at the 10 milliamp point. And you can now see my LED has certainly clearly gone off, indicating that the relay has dropped out. So what are our observations from this little crack? So the first thing we're thinking about are the changes in the magnetic circuit. So the relay picks up at 50 milliamps and drops out at 10. So why, why is that the case? So if we look at our little drawing down the bottom here, let's look at the construction of the relay. Here's our relay contacts, and they're physically connected to the armature of the relay. We basically have a solenoid. That's all this is. It's a solenoid in here. When we energize it, we're creating a magnetic path through here. And that magnetic path, when the relay is not operated, has this air gap. So we're going to get flux through here, which is going to make it hard for the coil to pull in. But on top of all of that, I've got a spring pulling it back. So I've got two things at play that have to be overcome when the relay first turns on. So I've got to get 50 milliamps flowing in my circuit before there's enough flux and energy to cause that armature to overcome the spring, overcome the air gap and pull closed and therefore change over my contacts. 
So at pickup, the magnetic air gap has to be overcome and the spring tension has to be overcome. But this is not the case at drop out. At drop out, once the magnetic circuit is closed, it takes less energy to keep it or hold it closed. So once I've got it closed, it doesn't take anywhere near as much energy to hold it closed. So that's why at drop out, it only takes 10 milliamps. I can drop the current all the way from 50, well, as if you remember, we had 110 milliamps at our 24 volts. Then we dropped it down to the dropout point at, at 6 volts and we got that 10 milliamps. So somewhere in the middle here was the pick up point. So the pick up was in there and remember we had to have 50 milliamps to pick the thing up. But we're able to get much lower than 50, only took 10 before there was sufficient or insufficient magnetic field to hold it in and the spring would be overcome and the spring would then pull the thing open. So change to the magnetic circuit, the relay picks up at 50 milliamps but drops out at 10. We've answered why, because at the pick up point the magnetic circuit has an air gap and a spring to overcome but on the way down at drop out it doesn't have to overcome those things and it drops out much earlier at 10 milliamps. Our next observation is what about changes in the electromagnetic circuit itself? The relay drops out at 6.8 volts and 10 milliamps and again why so at 6.8 and that's 10 milliamps that's by the way that's 68 milliwatts the magnetic field reduces to the point that the spring tension now takes over and pulls the relay open so at our 10 milliamps so at our 10 milliamps the magnetic field is now very weak there's very little magnetic field left and of course we get this dropout effect and the relay operates so in a magnetic circuit the pick up point and the drop out point are often very very different So I hope you've enjoyed our little prac on electromagnetism and our relay. That brings uh, lesson three for electromagnetism to a close.